Hello world and welcome to a brand new Edge of Look. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing fine. Today I would like to talk about the new task feature in Microsoft Sentinel. I already created a video where I used the tasks, which was uh, creating tasks by using uh, a chat GPT. But there were a lot of questions about the tasks. What are they? Where can I find them? How can I use them? What are they for? So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. So let's go and dive into the tasks and switch over to my desktop so uh, I can explain you a little bit more. So here we are at Microsoft Sentinel. So if I go to incidents and create a new incident, just for test, test incident, I give it as a description, I click on create, it will create the incident for me. If I go to full details and I go to the incident page, there is a button in the top menu over here, which is called tasks. And this is where we can create and read and work with tasks. So let's create our first task. So we can give it a title and a description. So what do we need to fill in there? So tasks can be very helpful. We can use them in, in multiple ways. One way is to log all the actions that you have executed in order to respond on a incident. For example, we can uh, say investigated, sign in logs. I have investigated the sign in logs using the KQL query sign in limit 100 or whatever the, uh, the query might be. I can click on save, hit the check, the check means that the task is executed uh, and this task is logged at the incident. And this can be very helpful if you want to look back at the incident and want to know what you have done. We have a list of tasks that were executed for this incident. Another way to use the task, if you know how to resolve a incident on forehand, let's say you have an, uh, an incident, the, the unfamiliar sign in properties is an, uh, is an uh, incident that I see in, in a lot of Sentinel instances. Um, we can create the instructions for the security engineer on forehand. And let me show you how we can do that. So if I go back to my desktop, I go to Sentinel and I go to automation. Here we have the automation rules. Now automation rules are there to run some automation when an incident is created updated or there's something done with the entities, etc. So let's say I want to create an automation rule. I can give it a name, add task for known incident. I have a trigger over here. Here we can select when uh, the automation rule is triggered. In this case, I want to trigger it when an incident is created. You can also choose here for when an incident is updated or when the alert is created. I click on incident is created. If the analytic rule contains uh, name all, we will leave it as all. So each incident that comes in uh, will trigger uh, this, uh, this automation rule. And now we add another condition. Let's say on title and the title contains user. So we have an incident that is related to a user or something. And now we can execute actions. So when the incident comes in, it has the word user in its title. Uh, we can add a task. We can give that task a title. Validate sign in logs. And we can give it a description, validate the sign in logs using KQL query and then the sign in uh, query comes here. I can click on apply 
And now we have an automation rule which will uh, automatically create a uh, task for a known incident. I can add more tasks over here. So let's do that. Also add a validate sign in location. Validate the location from which the user has signed in. And when I can click on apply, those two tasks will get added for an incident uh, that is created with the name user in its title. So if I now go and create an incident, we will see that the tasks will be added. So let's switch back to the desktop and create an incident. So if I go to incidents, I click on create incident and I give it a title. Uh, user has signed in from rare location. User has signed in from a rare location. It's just a demo, so content of the incident is not that, uh, that interesting, but it has user in its title. That's important for now. So if I go to full details and we go to tasks, you'll see that the validate sign-in uh, logs has been added and also the validate sign-in location has been added. And we have the instructions over here. So now, uh, our uh, security engineer can go and uh, resolve this incident. And resolving the incident is actually follow the instructions and hit the checkbox when it's completed. So we also see in the, uh, the overview pane over here that two of the two tasks have been completed. We can show, uh, it, it can display the details, which brings us to the, uh, to the page. Uh, so this is all quite nice. So you saw by now how we can use tasks to log our activities that we execute and an incident. And you also saw how we can uh, add tasks to an incident that we on forehand know how to resolve. And those are mainly the incidents that are uh, happening more than once. We can also add tasks using logic apps. And let me give you an example uh, of this. So if I go to logic apps over there, I've pinned them in the, the menu. I can click on add. I want to have it in my subscription one and I already have a use group, user uh, uh, resource group called Sentinel Automation. I give my logic app a name at VT task and I'm going to store it in West Europe. So in this task, we are going to leverage Fibers Total to add a task with information from an external uh, source, uh, Fibers Total in this case. Let's go to next, leave the text. Let's go to the overview page. This all looks amazing. And uh, let's create, this is normal, a, a fast process. So within a couple of seconds, it's uh, completed. Ah, there it is. So, and that will bring me to the Logic App Designer. Let's start with a blank Logic App. And I can search over here for Sentinel. That brings me all the triggers which are Microsoft Sentinel related. And you want to select over here the Microsoft Sentinel Incident Trigger. This is a trigger that we can use in combination with automation rules in Microsoft Sentinel. I will show you that in a minute. So in my case, it's already connected as I have other uh, logic apps in the resource group, which are already leveraging Microsoft Sentinel. So it's already found that there is a connection in that resource group. Um, if that's not the case, the logic app designer will ask you to what Sentinel workspace you would like to connect it. Of course, you need to do that with an account that has the proper permissions. So the next step that we will do is searching for Sentinel. We want to distillate 
the IP address is out of the entities that are part of our Sentinel incident. So if I search for Sentinel, that will show me the Sentinel solution. And now I have all the Sentinel uh, tasks or activities over here. If I search for IP address, I get the get IPs from entities. I need to fill in the entities list. And if I search in this box over here for entities, that will link the entities that are part of the triggered incident to this activity. The next step is the virus total step. If I search for virus total, I will get the solution in a minute. Ah, there it is. And I can click on get an IP report. In my case, I have it already connected to a connection. That's because I already tested with virus total and just like the trigger, there is already a connection uh, uh, visible. If you are new with Logic Apps and Virus Total, you need to enter the API key. You can find that at your account of Virus Total. So if I go to IP address over here, I can click the IP address. And what you will see is there is a for each box around this Virus Total task. What it actually will do, it will iterate through all the IP addresses that are in my entities of my Sentinel incident. And for each IP address, it will get an IP report at virus total. So the next step would be, we go to Sentinel and search for task to create a add to create a task. And we do that by clicking on add task to incident over here. I need to fill in the incident ARM ID, which sounds complicated, but if I search over here for ARM, we have the ARM ID. So uh, doing so will make sure that the Logic App knows that it needs to add a task to the incident, which was triggered uh, here. I can give it a, a title, uh, virus total IP report, and now I can, uh, th th this is the funny part. You saw it, if I click over here, we have all the virus total information uh, clickable. If I click on uh, in the description field over here, well, we can do that. So let me show you how we can cheat around that. If I fill in who, uh, who is, I thought also a country was in there. Country, uh, I think we also had uh, had owner. Funny thing, what you can do is you can uh, go to the title, click owner. We can uh, then copy it, paste it in here. We can do the same thing for country. Let's copy it and paste it in there. And lastly, the US. We can copy that and paste it in there. So, now we have set up everything to add a task to Microsoft Sentinel, which already uh, has done a virus total IP lookup. If I click on save, the Logic App is safe. We now need to configure Microsoft Sentinel. So let's go to Sentinel and we need to tell Sentinel it needs to run the Logic App as soon as uh, uh, an incident comes in. So if I go to automation, I click on create over here. I want to have a new automation rule. Run VT report, run virus total report. I want it to be triggered when the incident is created. And I give it for demo purposes a uh, contains uh, a virus in the title. Then I need to execute an action and that will be uh, run a playbook. And this will display the uh, logic apps in my resource group. I click on add VT task over here and it will automatically uh, run the virus total task for me. I already did this uh, before I uh, recorded this demo as so I need to have a incident with uh, entities. Uh, so what that will look like 
if I go to task, is what you'll see over here. We have the country, US, owner, Microsoft uh, for the IP address, uh, which is part of this uh, incident. And we have the whole uh, who is information over here. That will help our security engineers a lot. They don't have to go to the virus total website, fill in the information over there, watch it over there, come back to Sentinel, switch, uh, uh, switch between uh, the websites. That's not required anymore. So I think the tasks are really, really helpful to bring our incident response to a next level. We can enhance the quality by pre-filling the task for incidents that we know how to respond on. And each time they come in, respond in the same way. It also makes our SOC much more scalable because all the engineers that are part of our team work with the same instructions, which I think is pretty cool. We can also use the tasks at incidents that are not known to us. We can log all the activities that we executed in order to resolve uh, the incident. And when we later want to look back at the incident, we exactly know what we executed to investigate and uh, mitigate the incident. Tasks are pretty, are pretty helpful. I like them. You also saw how we can use logic apps to uh, make more advanced uh, tasks where we also use information from an external source like VirusTotal. And that can fire up your SOC a lot because now you can do lookups at VirusTotal and the other uh, uh, third parties, add the content to the, uh, the task. And so you can do so much more with less clicks. I like that. So if you are still here, that means you like this content. If so, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get a notification when a new video is uploaded. That will help me uh, grow this channel and make better and more videos for you. So with that, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.